Hello everyone. Today we shall discuss about the assignment 1 which is given in the Swayam portal for our ECG course. The assignment 1 contains 10 MCQ questions and they have to be submitted before 10th of August. So the first question is which of the following is a slow conducting pacemaker tissue? Options are SA nodal cell, Purkinje fiber cell, atrial myocyte and ventricular myocyte. For this, we should know how the pacemaker tissues are classified. So, the pacemaker tissue is classified on the basis of conduction into slow conducting pacemaker tissue and fast conducting pacemaker tissue. The examples of slow conducting pacemaker tissue are SA nodal cell, AV nodal cell. Fast conducting pacemaker tissue includes atrial myocytes, ventricular myocytes and Purkinje fiber cell. So, with this detail, we know that the slow conducting pacemaker tissue is the SA nodal tissue. So, the right answer is SA nodal cell. Next, the impulses from SA node is transmitted to the left atrium via Pacman or Venki back or Thoral bundle or His bundle. So, let us brush up the anatomy. If you look closely in the image, the SA node which is situated in the right atrium transmits impulses to the AV node through three internodal pathways. What are those pathways? They are Backman here, Venki back here and Thoral. Okay. So, the Backman is the first pathway. Venki back is the middle pathway and Thoral is the most lateral pathway. This Backman pathway has a branch which transmits the impulses from the SA node to the left atrium on the left side. So, it is the Backman's branch which transmits impulses to the left atrium. So, the right answer is Backman's bundle. Next, the property of excitability is called. So, we are given four options whether it is inotropism or dromotropism or chronotropism or bathmotropism. First, I will explain what are they and then I will try to simplify how you could remember things. So, inotropism is the contractility. Dromotropism is the conductance. Chronotropism is rhythmicity or automaticity. Bathmotropism it is excitability. So, how are we going to remember these things? So, we in ICU commonly use inotropes like dopamine, dopamine. They increase or noradrenaline. They increase the contractility of the heart. So, we can easily remember with the help of inotropes that we are increasing the contractility of the heart. But for the other three, the easiest among them it is chronotropism. Chronotropism is something which deals with the rate and the rhythm. So, rhythm is rhythmicity, rate is automaticity. For bathmotropism and dromotropism, you have to remember in some funny ways. Probably you can remember that after taking a bath, you get excited. So, bathmotropism is related with excitability. And dromotropism, probably you can rename it as drama. You usually conduct a drama. So, conductance can be correlated with dromotropism. These are very funny ways to remember but there is no other option because if you do not have any clue or mnemonic before uh, taking these questions in the exams, definitely there is a high chance that you could get confused with the terminology and you can give a wrong answer. So, let me just remind you again, inotropism is contractility, dromotropism is the conductability or conductance. Chronotropism is rhythmicity or automaticity and bathmotropism is the excitability. We will go to the next question. The standard paper speed in ECG machine is 25 millimeters per second. 
this is a very straightforward and simple question next is also a very simple question regarding the placement of pleats when recording ecg all are correct except v1 fourth intercostal space on the right margin of the sternum v2 fourth intercostal space on the left margin of the sternum v3 linear midpoint between v1 and v2 v4 fifth intercostal space at the mid clavicular line so we'll just look at where these leads are properly placed see that lead v1 is placed in the right side other leads are placed in the left side it is placed in the right margin of the sternum in the fourth intercostal space right margin of sternum the other leads v2 is placed in the left margin of the sternum in the fourth intercostal space the most peculiar lead is v4 because it doesn't have a particular place they usually say that it is placed in the fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line but it is not the ideal place v4 is always placed at the cardiac apex what is the difference the cardiac apex is usually in the fifth intercostal space in the medial to the mid clavicular line no suppose if you are taking ecg of a mitral regurgitation patient the patient's left ventricle could get dilated probably it could be in the sixth intercostal space or sometimes in the seventh intercostal space similarly in the case of aortic regurgitation also or any chamber enlargements it could be lateral to the mid clavicular line most of the times also in the case of mr as well as ar so in those cases you have to find out where is the cardiac apex and you have to place the lead v4 so, so we should not place v4 imagining that it is always placed in the fifth intercostal space medial to the mid clavicular line or on the mid clavicular line okay identify the cardiac apex and place the lead properly next is v5 which is placed in the fifth intercostal space at the anterior axillary line and v6 in the same intercostal space in the mid axillary line so where is v3 placed v3 is placed after fixing all these leads between v2 and v4 okay now we will review the question you can note that v3 is not placed between v1 and v2 it is placed between v2 and v4 so this is the answer for this question the next question is ecg report must consist of the following information it includes everything it should contain rate rhythm axis conduction intervals description of the st segment qrs complex t wave so the option is all of the above this is very simple question this is a question where you have to brush up the physiology when a depolarizing wave move perpendicular to a surface electrode it records an the options are positive wave negative wave biphasic wave and none of the above so you have to understand when a depolarization wave moves towards an electrode it will produce a positive deflection when a depolarization wave moves away from the electrode then it will produce a negative deflection however when a depolarization wave moves perpendicular to the electrode then it will cause a biphasic deflection okay so this is clearly explained in the course that when a cardiac muscle is like this and an electrode is placed here when the depolarization waves moves towards the electrode it will have a positive deflection when it reaches the point where it is in front of the electrode it will have a downward trend and come to the baseline when it moves away from the electrode it will have a negative deflection okay then when it comes perpendicular it will have a biphasic deflection like this so it is clearly explained but you have to remember this basic concept 
when current moves towards an electrode it will have a positive deflection and when the current moves away from the electrode it will have a negative deflection and when the current is perpendicular in current i mean a depolarization wave is perpendicular to a surface electrode then there will be a biphasic wave which is produced the orientation for lead 1 is this is the cardiac axis diagram lead 1 has 0 degree orientation you have to remember the orientation of all the leads which is avl minus 30 degree 2 3 avf with plus 60 plus 90 plus 120 and avr with minus 150 so you have to remember the orientation of all the frontal leads and special leads next question is which of the following is correct qrs complex indicates atrial contraction qrs complex indicates ventricular contraction p wave indicates beginning of ventricular contraction st segment indicates atrial contraction so first we have to know that p q r s t are the waves p waves are produced due to atrial depolarization or atrial contraction QRS complex is produced due to ventricular depolarization or ventricular contraction. T wave is produced due to ventricular relaxation or ventricular repolarization. Okay. Now, where is the atrial repolarization or atrial relaxation? This atrial relaxation happens inside the QRS complex. so we will not have a separate wave for atrial repolarization or atrial relaxation we have to remember that it is merged in the qrs complex so the right answer is qrs complex indicates ventricular contraction we'll go to the next question which of the following signify the atrio ventricular conduction delay p wave occurs due to atrial depolarization qrs complex occurs due to ventricular depolarization then pr interval is the time which is taken by the impulse to travel from the atrium to the ventricle to depolarize the ventricles so if there is any delay in conduction it should prolong the pr interval so from where does the pr interval start it starts from the beginning of the p wave always remember it is the beginning of the p wave or not the end of the p wave beginning of the p wave to the beginning of qrs complex okay sometimes if there is no q wave present then you can take that it is the beginning of the r wave so always remember whenever there is a av conduction delay it causes prolongation of the pr interval in case you are a person who is interested in ecgs you can check out our ecg bnb app which is the easiest way for ecg literacy this app is available both for android as well as ios users for android users you can type the name ecg bnb in the play store and download the app and for ios users you can download the class plus app and enter the organization code which is shown in the screen Once you log in you can find the course ECG Alpha which is present in the store section at the bottom in this course entire ECG content is broken down into levels and sub levels each sub level will contain an explanation video in short and crisp format followed by class notes for easy revision and practice ECGs to solve and relearn apart from that the striking feature is that all your doubts pertaining to the course content will be personally clarified by myself or from the members of my team through the chat support which is available 24/7 you can post the ecg doubts which you come across during your day in the chat and we will try to solve it for you in case if you are a student you can get the course at 70% off if you find this type of dedicated ecg content interesting you can subscribe to the ecg bnb youtube channel for regular learning thank you and until next time it's bye from ecg bnb team